hello and welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to look at uh, filters. Now, if you've not used filters much in your photography, it can be quite daunting to know, you know, when should I use them? Which do I choose from for a particular situation? Um, uh, and how do I actually use them to get the best results? Now, I know that when I first got filters, I really didn't have a clue what I was doing uh, and it can be quite overwhelming. So what I want to do in this video is help walk you through the basics uh, and give you an idea of what they are, how to use them uh, and what you need really. Okay, so the first thing I consider when thinking about filters is, do I really need them for this particular shot? Now, if you can't identify whether there's a particular problem that you're trying to resolve, it might be that the filters aren't necessary for the shot that you're uh, currently taking. Um, I've seen clients on workshops that used filters for almost every shot because They've been kind of somehow advised that, or given the impression that to take proper landscape images, you you, you, know, you have to use filters. Not true. Um, I've even seen some professional photographers who are probably what I'd describe as habitual filter users, got a bit of a, a, a filter problem. And, you know, they're using them sometimes because it's just become very ingrained in their workflow. Um, so that's not to say that they're wrong, but what I would highlight to you um, are a few reasons why you don't necessarily want to reach for filters unless you really need to. Okay, so first off, every time that we put something between the scene and our lens, we move in a little bit further away from the kind of uh, optimal image quality that that lens is capable of delivering. Might not be a lot, depending on the uh, filters that you're using, but we are moving ever so slightly away from optimum quality. Another reason is that there's a much uh, greater risk of uh, getting flare in your shots or uh, a mark appearing on the image, uh, particularly when you're using uh, several filters at once or what you'd call filter stacking. Um, you might get a spot of rain on there or uh, a thumbprint. So, you know, again, that's a, a good reason to avoid using filters unless they are necessary. Okay, uh, another thing is that it takes time to set filters up properly. If you're just using a polarizing filter, that might just be seconds, um, but you might be doing something more complex. You might have a ND grad on there. You might have a ND filter on there, and you might also have a polarizer on there. So that can take potentially minutes to get set up properly. Um, so I can tell you from bitter, bitter personal experience that if you're presented with a once in a lifetime transient light uh, beaming down on a, a gorgeous landscape scene, you could find that instead of getting this shot of a lifetime, uh, you've ended up fumbling around with your filter set up. Uh, by the time you're ready, the lighting's changed and you've missed the moment. And that is a bummer. Okay, so another reason to not use filters is that today, um, if we're shooting digitally, there's often other solutions or options that we can choose from to overcome a particular problem that we're faced with. Uh, I still shoot film for fun. Um, when doing that, those particular options are available. But for digital photography, there's many more ways to skin a cat these days. So up to now, you might have got the impression that Rod is saying, no, you know, you don't really need filters. Okay, it's true that I don't use filters all the time, but um, it's also true that there's hardly ever an occasion when I'd go out uh, without having packed a range of filters that I might use uh, during the course of the day. Uh, the type of filters that I take out will depend on what I'm shooting, the subject matter, 
um, the location, the lighting, the weather. Um, but in my mind, there's no doubt that when you do need those filters, they can be a lifesaver and help you get a shot that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to do. Okay, so how do you decide that you do need to use a filter? I'd suggest composition is king, get that sorted out first and foremost. And then once you've done that, take a test shot. Uh, review that image on the back of your camera and make an assessment about whether there are any problems that you can see. Uh, so for example, one common problem you might find is your shot you've just taken looks great except for the sky which has gone too bright or we call it blown out highlights um, and essentially that means uh, you're looking at the detail in the clouds uh, but it's just gone it's just completely blown out alternatively uh, the sky looks great but the foreground interest that you've included in your composition has actually gone so dark that you, you just can't see the detail within it. We've lost what we call the, the shadow detail. Now, if you experience that problem, uh, that's when you'd use a category of filters called neutral density graduated filters, a bit of a mouthful, so known as ND grads for short. Um, these are designed to manage the way that light comes into the camera in order that you get a nice balanced overall exposure where you can see the bright parts of the scene and the darker parts of the scene all together in one shot. Uh, they have a dark coating that only covers basically half of the filter and you can think of them as sunglasses that just cover up the bright bits of the scene. Another problem that you might experience is you're out shooting a scene where there's movement and the classic example is a, a waterfall. You can't get the water to look like it's well, you know, moving, even though it is. So you end up trying to use a longer shutter speed or a slower shutter speed in order to render that movement. But when you've selected the speed that does that, you then find out that your picture's coming out way too bright or what you'd call overexposed. So in that type of situation, you'd use a category of filters called neutral density filters or NDs. So these have a dark coating that covers the entire uh, filter and their one and only job really is to hold back light. So the result of holding back light is that the camera needs a slower shutter speed in order that there's uh, a sufficient amount of light hitting the sensor um, and in turn ensuring that our exposure is bright enough. So that means um, we can record movement in such a way that it appears, even though it's a single image, that there is a, a dynamism, uh, a dynamic movement uh, to those elements within the scene. A final situation you might have experienced is you're out shooting a scene, say it's a bright day, and you've taken an image and it looks a bit washed out, or put another way, the um, colours just don't appear very vibrant. Now, that's pretty much normally caused by the way that light reflects back off particular surfaces. Now, if that's a problem, then polarizing filters or polarizers for short are the type of filters we'd use to help us overcome that problem. Um, what they do is cut down uh, the glare in a scene. And by cutting down glare and reflection, in turn, that helps to improve the saturation of colors. And we end up with a, a much punchier, more vibrant picture. Okay, so in conclusion, First things first, check whether there's a problem with your shot. Secondly, depending on what the problem is, choose the most suitable filter group to resolve the problem. Sounds simple. It's not that simple, but you get the message. Um, if you haven't got filters yet, don't worry. You can still take photographs and improve your photography without them. Um, and for some types of photography, if you're finding yourself interested in street photography, for example, 
you might not need filters at all. Now if you do uh, landscape photography, and that's what I do mostly, um, you might want to think about starting out with a second hand set or something inexpensive so that you can try them out, uh, have a practice and see whether it's going to be something for you. Not everybody wants to use filters, um, but the only way to know if they're going to be useful for you is to try them out. Um, if you find that you like the filters and you're getting benefit from them, then consider um, after a while, if you're getting more serious, investing in something uh, good quality filters. I've done separate videos that cover each of the filter groups and they go into step by step detail on how to use each of them. Uh, so if that is something you think could be useful for you, click on the video uh, at the end or you can find the links in the description. OK, I hope you found that introduction to filters helpful. Um, if you've got any questions or thoughts, then pop them in the comments below. Uh, and consider subscribing if you'd like to keep up to date with more photography tips videos. OK, the next step is for you to get out there and take pictures. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.